Hello everyone. In this lecture, I want to give an introduction to the project management process to everyone. More specifically, we'll talk about uh, what activities we should take in each stage of a project life cycle. First, I want to talk about uh, what is a process. Then I want to talk about uh, a project-oriented process management. Lastly, I want to talk about the activities in particular in each stage of a project life cycle. We define a process as a set of interrelated actions or activities from planning a goal to the completion of the goal. There are several types of processes. For instance, in the online learning system, I added uh, a lecture on business process management. But uh, in this lecture, we'll focus on a project-oriented process, or we call this process a project management life cycle. It is a time period from uh, opening a project to the closing down of a project. We really separate uh, a project life cycle into five major stages. First, the initiating stage. Second, the planning stage. Third, the executing stage. Fourth, monitoring and the controlling stage. And lastly, we need to close down a project. Let's talk about uh, the activities we need to take in each stage. In the initiating stage, we need to complete three major tasks. First, we need to identify and confirm if there is an interest in our project proposal. We need to conduct interviews with or use surveys among potential users and customers. Ask them if they would use the products or services produced by our project. If there is an interest, we need to ask the future users and the customers what features or functionalities they expect to have in the products or services. This is called a requirement analysis. Accomplishing the users and the customers' expectations would be the goal of our project. This is our first task to accomplish in the initiating stage. Then we move to the second step. We need to perform a feasibility analysis on our project. We need to see if we have the talents, human resources, financial resources to accomplish what the customers and users expect. If it is feasible, we need to present our project proposal to the sponsors, ask them for the resources we need. This is the second step. Then we need to move to the third step. We need to hire or look for the team members who can help the project manager to accomplish the project goal. These are the major tasks we need to do in the initiating stage. In the planning stage, we need to do a variety of activities. For instance, we need to specify the scope of our project. We need to define what kind of activities we need to take in order to accomplish the project goal. These are more specific activities. One of the most important activities in the planning stage is to create a work breakdown structure. In the future, when I mention the work breakdown structure, sometimes I will use a short name, WBS, to represent this structure. I want to use an example to introduce the work breakdown structure to everyone. Let's take a look at the example. Let's say I want to build an aircraft system. This is my project goal. I want to break down this goal into more specific activities. For instance, in order to build an aircraft system, I need to build the air vehicle. I need to establish the program management system. I need to perform a system testing and enhancement. I need to provide trainings to the team members, and so on. And then I want to look at each specific goal and find out what activities I need to take. Let's say I want to build the air vehicle. I need to build the airframe, 
the propulsion system and develop an application system to control the vehicle. When I want to provide the trainings, I need to give the equipment knowledge, the service quality knowledge, facility safety knowledge to the team members. When we create a, a work breakdown structure, we want to have a drill down analysis on our project so that we have uh, more insights on the projects. The main purpose of uh, a work breakdown structure is to have uh, an overview, a comprehensive overview about our project so that we can prepare the resources we need in the future. The project uh, executing, monitoring, and uh, controlling are usually carried out together. When we implement our project, we want to perform the cost control, schedule control, risk control, and quality control in order to make sure our project is right on track. Then we move to the last stage, the closing stage of our project. One of the most important activities is to collect feedback from our stakeholders, such as customers and sponsors. Ask them how satisfied they are about our project implementation and outcomes. If they are not satisfied with some part, how can we improve in the future? We want to archive the lessons we learned from the current project so that we can use it for the future projects. These are the main activities we need to take in a project life cycle.